All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. We do have a new official short interest report to go over with you here in this video, as well as some breakdowns of what we're expecting for CPI tomorrow, how this could affect the markets, as well as AMC stock, as, as well as everything else you need to know. So we're just going to jump right into it. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and source your comments, questions, or concerns down below in the comment section. So not the short interest report that we were expecting. And there's a couple things that are happening here. 16.44% short interest of free flow. Apparently, the settlement date was August 31st. And it was released today. Huh. 16.5% short interest. Now, how does that happen when AMC stock goes from 33 odd dollars down to 12 in this reported time frame couple different things i want to say number one is if a lot of retail investors sold their shares of amc so if you are a retail investor well like the video comment down below have you sold have you not sold but by hitting the like button you let us know that you haven't sold. Okay. So I'm kind of curious on that. I want to see where, where, where people are. If a lot of people like this video and a lot of people comment down below, well, that means that odds are a lot of retail investors have not sold. And I don't think they have due to just the obvious psychological effect. A loss is not a technical loss until you sell, right? So if, if you bought in um, at higher prices and you're down a lot and now you sell, you have realized that loss. And that just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to do that. So I don't think a lot of retail investors sold, but that is a possible reason why the stock has dropped so much and even the short interest has fallen. The other thing that I do want to say is the shares that are short actually increased by quite a bit so you were at 17.11 million uh shares short on august 15th as of august 31st there was 23.21 million shares sold short so over 6 million shares were short in this time frame now what's happened is amc did in fact raise the 40 million shares before October 31st. They indeed did do that. So the flow is bigger. So when AMC dilutes you, the flow becomes larger. And so when you're calculating the short percentage of free flow, it looks a little smaller, although you have seen more shares get shorted. And this was going to have some effect on amc i did not think that amc did already sell the 40 million shares by august 31st but indeed they did now with that being said this is the highest amount of shares that you have ever seen sold short in amc so the free flow out on loan or the free flow that is sold short looks smaller but actually look at the shares that are sold short. So I would actually say this is a win based on how many shares are currently short. Even back in January of, of 2021, let's take a look. You were at about 5 million shares sold short. And now you're at 23 million. So... I, I, I still think the the squeezeability of AMC is obviously at the highest level it's been at. But again, the numbers look a lot different as far as the short interest of free flow. And these numbers, you know, could obviously be wrong as well. The current day short interest could be a lot higher than that. We actually did go through somewhat of a bounce back here during this time period, right? during this period right here until and then AMC obviously went from about $13, $14 per share down to 7. So, 
This is not the most up-to-date numbers that we have, but it's the closest thing to up-to-date numbers that we have. So how am I thinking about this? Well, not quite the 50% short interest of free flow that we were expecting, but in a comparable term, it actually is. So if you factor out the shares that AMC raised and you just look at the jump from even July 31st of about 15.62 million shares sold short to the last reported short interest of 17.11 million and that went from about 26.69% short interest to 29.24% short interest and if if you basically do the numbers here the short interest is really over 40% based on if AMC's float was still the same size. Okay. Now, we're not getting reported the, the excess 40 million shares that were lent out, or not lent out, but sold in the market. We don't know if a lot of those were short, sold short. We don't know if a lot of people just bought those shares or what happened with those shares. Odds are if they were sold short. So I think the float, the short interest of free float is going to continue to rise. But I, I don't want people to really get this confused. The amount of shares just skyrocketed that are sold short. Just the float doesn't look as high as it did before the short percentage of, of free float because of the 40 million shares that AMC led on to the market. Now, again, we don't know if a lot of those shares were sold short or not. So this, I think, actually puts you in a uh, much squeezier potential um, situation because of the amount of shares that are now sold short. I mean, you're, what, uh, almost five times more short than you were back in January of 2021 as far as the actual amount of shares. That's a lot, okay? And I don't expect a lot more dilution at all. It's obvious that could happen. Um, but that just wouldn't make sense right now for AMC to do that. So I don't think that is coming anytime soon. I think the round of dilution is done for now. So likely what you'll see over the next couple exchange reported short interest numbers is an increase to the short interest of free flow and likely more shares that continue to be sold short. But even, even when you're looking at this quite logically, the flow out there is still very low compared to what it was, right? Compared to 500 million shares out there, the float today of about 150 million is a lot lower than it, than it was. And these shares that are sold short could be a big problem for hedge funds and institutions. Now, on the other hand, I think it's also important to kind of point out that some shorts could be hiding short positions still right there's a lot of ways you can do this in the options market or just outright not report your short positions that's possible as well and i would imagine that is happening to some extent especially considering the arbitrage trade is over the reverse split has already happened okay there's 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 a lot less risk of really getting investigated or looked at now that this is over and the FTDs are starting to come down, things of that nature. So it would make some sense how there could be some illegal shorts out there. Obviously, don't hold your hat on that. That's not an investment thesis. That's not a trading thesis. But that is a possibility as well. And I think you're getting a little mix of that in here as well. Now, on the other hand, the option activity. The option activity holds a lot of shorts. Now, the market makers have the shorts for the options, and they don't have to report their shorted positions because they are a market maker, and they're very fluid. So a market maker could be short 10 million shares today and not be short 10 million shares tomorrow and have to essentially cover on 10 million shares by the next day. It's very fluid, very much like back and forth with uh, market makers but when you've consistently fallen like we have recently with amc there's usually a lot more 
obvious, you know, market maker shorts out there than what is typical. Now, if we look at the shares out on loan as well, that is quite uh, different than what we're even seeing as far as these shares that are sold short. You have uh, 26.5 million shares out on loan. Days to cover 2.58. Cost to borrow about 7.84 and utilization of 74. Uh, 74%. Free flow out on loan at 16.8%. Estimated short interest on free flow at 11.52%. I do think this will, will update as we do get into the trading day tomorrow as well to kind of be more reflective. And it wouldn't surprise me, you're probably going to see short interest around 20% once the actual, you know, Ortex platform up, updates itself. Now, $133.41 million worth of short positions currently in AMC stock. Short score of 70 if you look at the cost of borrow fees, same thing here. I do think you're going to get more kind of updates for the cost of borrow fees as well, as there are a lot of shares uh, that are uh, obviously sold short out there, and we are getting a little bit more clarity. But as of right now, Interactive Brokers says 4.38% for the cost of borrow fees. Cost of borrow average over here on Ortex is 6.27%. 8.6% for the cost of borrow max and cost of borrow minimum at 4.33%. So we do have some obviously very high numbers here um, as, as far as the actual short interest, right? And the amount of shares that are sold short. Cost of borrow fees likely will start to follow that. And I do think Ortex's estimates will also um, go up as well. It looks like about 900,000 shares were actually sold short today as per Ortex estimates. Now, we also don't have option activity. I don't know when this is going to come back. I'm, I, I was hoping it, it came back at the start of this week. It could take a little bit longer than that. I, it, it's it's hard to say, but I would love to get some insights on how the option data is, is evolving and, and looking right now. Now, if we take a look at Stocko Tracker data, we can still look at the option activity, but not necessarily the individual trades that we like to look at. If you look at this Friday, you have 64,703 calls that are currently in the money, 183,507 calls that are out the money. In the money puts at 128,684. Uh, puts out the money at 236,661. So just a lot of option activity on both sides here. It's not really heavily skewed towards puts or calls there's a good kind of equal ground of option activity here and i do think the rest of this week is going to be very volatile as we are going to get cpi coming tomorrow in which will highlight different banks expectations and what the actual expectation is for the markets now if you take a look at some of the ftd numbers as well i've pointed this out but the rest of this week you're going to see an ftd spike heading into friday september 15th that is this upcoming friday and uh on Friday, you are at 4.123 million. And then the next Monday, you ramp up even higher to 4.5 million. So this also has an anti uh, dilutive effect to AMC. So you will be seeing some shares being bought back, reducing the overall amount of shares that are outstanding, guys. So uh, there you have that. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at what Nick Timmerhouse just said um, and uh, shared with us. So it does look like Bank Bank of America is expecting uh, high CPI. Basically, everyone is in the 0 0.6 range. Just TD Securities and Piper Sandler are expecting the uh, the 0 0.5 range. Uh, headline CPI, basically, uh, all of the firms are expecting, well, it's actually quite mixed. Some firms are expecting 3.7%. Some firms are expecting 3.6%. But Barclays, Citi, as well as UBS are expecting 3.7% for the headline. Basically, all the other major banks are expecting 3.6%. Core CPI, a lot of banks are expecting 0.2%. You do have JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley, and Piper Sandler expecting less than 0.2%. Uh, your core CPI, uh, everyone is expecting 4.3%. So this is in line with the estimates as far as core is concerned. They're going to round that to 0.2% and core year over year is expected at 4.3%. Now your inflation rate on a month over month basis is expected at 0.6%. If you come in higher than that, 
yeah, you're going to have a problem in the markets. Now, your inflation rate year over year, you're expecting that to go from 3.2% to 3.6%. That is also expecting quite the increase. And that's basically what, what most of the banks are actually expecting. So 3.7%, not going to be that terrible. If you get 3.8% or higher, that's where the markets might start to freak out, as well as that month over month number for headline. If that comes in at 0.7%, yeah, you're going to have a big problem as well. But I think the biggest thing that the markets you know would be upset about the markets would sell off about uh, coming tomorrow would be the core inflation rates if those rates come in higher than expectations well that's kind of telling you that not just oil and natural gas is pushing up headline but something else likely shelter also pushing up the core so that's really what to watch for coming tomorrow and then on thursday you have the biggest data report in my personal opinion, and that is the retail sales month over month. If these things come in negative, uh, you know, we're expecting 0.2% month over month retail sales. If that comes in negative, uh, that's going to affect your GDP estimates. That is going to kind of tell the markets like, hey, we might be going into a recession or pretty close to starting the recession process and that's not something the markets are pricing in as the uh, average consensus view for um, GDP from analysts is around 2.4%. Even on the low end, analysts are expecting 1%. If retail sales were to come in, call it negative, um, yeah, the expectations are going to fall quite a bit for Q3 GDP, and that could be a big problem. Now, like what we've seen today with AMC, AMC was up about 10% at one point. Looks like the markets kind of got attacked towards the end of the day. Uh, same thing with AMC stock as well. You close the day up 3.13%, and after hours up almost 1%. So a solid day nonetheless, but I do think uh, at some point over the next couple of trading days, you will get back to that eight-day moving average. You will break out above that and then start to make a make a move higher because let's be honest, AMC stock is in the value stock category, but it also has the added benefit of having volatility, right? Of being able to go to go higher during the potential you know short squeeze. So it's not like you're buying a very expensive company right now. You're buying a very cheap company um, that has the potential to to move quite to move up quite a bit from here even if you look at the average analyst um price targets i mean you'd be looking at a gain of 195 dot uh, percent as far as the return potential uh 21.68 is the average price target from what looks like nine analysts that are currently covering amc stock and the re the most recent price target increase or change at all was from eric wold and b riley securities and he slapped a 45 dollar price target on amc stock continuing to hold his 450 price target which he had before the actual reverse split itself so uh just a couple things to know let me know if you are holding amc down below in the comment section let me know what you are doing with your position and let me know what your expectations are for cpi coming out tomorrow hit the like button subscribe to the channel and source your comments questions or concerns down below in the comment section you guys have a great rest of your day and i will see you in the next one